Oh, hi, I'm Casey Ferris. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve here on YouTube. Today, we're talking about HSL curves in the color page of DaVinci Resolve. What the heck are those? Well, we're gonna find out. Before we jump in, I wanna mention really quick that we just released a really cool color grading course called Professional Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve. We go through all the basics and all the concepts of color grading. We look at professional techniques. You can download footage and color grade it yourself. You can follow along with me and you get a free update to the course whenever there is a new version of Resolve. It's pretty freaking rad. So make sure to check it out. I'll put a link right here and in the description. Let's get to it. Shaman. Down here in the middle part of our color page, we have the curves palette. And at the very top of this little palette, we have a couple little buttons. And the first button by default is our custom curves. But if we switch to these other buttons, it switches it out to other different kinds of curves. What are these strange things? Well, just like the custom curves are a way to remap the colors of your image, the input on the horizontal axis and the output on the vertical axis, a similar thing happens to the HSL curves. We call it HSL because HSL stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. That means that not only are we remapping brightnesses of different color channels, but we can actually select a hue from left to right and remap it by moving it up and down. Let's say we want to change this pink color to maybe more of a purple. Well, first we select the color that we want to change, which we can do in a bunch of different ways. Easiest way is to probably just color pick it right here. So we'll just kind of click and drag on this pink smoke. And we have some control points here. This actually might be a little bit easier to explain if we select blue first. So let's select some kind of blue. And now three control points appear right here. In the middle is where we actually picked and then the right and the left control points are our range. Those are just regular control points, but they kind of anchor the rest of the line. So we're only adjusting this blue. And as I move this up and down, we can see this paint right here on her neck change colors. Of course, the wider we move these things out, the more range we select. And as we move this around, that will look a little bit better but it will also affect more things. Doesn't seem to be a problem here. We're mostly just adjusting this blue, but good to know. Now, if you select a kind of a pink or a red color, it's going to make these three dots, but the difference is that this right side of this graph wraps around to the left, just like you would go around the world, right? So if I take a point here and I move it all the way to the right, it comes in on the left again. So it kind of loops. So this can be a little bit confusing when you do something like select a red and you have one point here, one point here, and one point here. What's actually happened is this is the middle point, just like we had earlier, but the right point that should be right here has wrapped around to this side of the world right here. So it's doing the same thing, it's just wrapping around, which can be a little bit confusing. So let's say we wanna take this pink and we want to make it more purple. I'll select this middle point and move it up and that will push it to more of a purple. This is an ideal way to change a color in a shot. Compared to the other ways in DaVinci Resolve, I would say this is probably the least destructive and safest way to do it if you can get away with it, right? So now we have this pink smoke and it's not really affecting too much else. It's not messing with her skin or her hair too much. Looks pretty good. That's a really nice way to change those hues. Now this is called hue versus hue because we're selecting something by its hue and we're changing its hue by moving up and down. But we also have other curves here like hue versus saturation. Same thing, we select it by the hue and then we change the saturation of it. And one thing to note, these always select things by the input value. So if I were to select this purple smoke, it's not gonna show up purple in my curve down here, it's still going to be that original red. And so as I desaturate it, it's gonna desaturate that purple smoke even though I didn't select the purple. It's selecting the original image. So just something to pay attention to. So maybe this green right here is a little bit too harsh. We can take that down a little bit here in our hue versus saturation and make that green a little bit less harsh. Or we can make that really bright by pushing up that saturation to a almost radioactive level. This is a great way to really refine your images. I'll reset all this so we don't get super confused. Hue versus luminance, same thing. Grab something by the hue, bring it down to make it darker, up to make it lighter. This will quickly get you in trouble because if you don't have a good selection here, if it's not really soft like this, if I push this up, it looks pretty good. There's not really any big problems. If I push it down, I can push it down quite a bit before it starts to look weird. 
But if I have these control points, these ranges set too small, and then I push it down, it starts to kind of have these little ring things on there. It starts to get really noisy. Luminous channel is one you really wanna be careful with when you're selecting it per color. Next we have luminous versus saturation. So that's how bright something is versus how intense the color is. And this is a great thing to use if you have a sky that you want to kind of look white or overcast or have really bright white clouds and they're showing up, you know, blue or purple or yellow or whatever. You can select the brighter parts of the clouds here and we can bring that saturation down in anything that is above a certain brightness. So that'll desaturate things in the upper part. So it turns these kind of yellowish clouds into white clouds. Nice. This is also really good for your shadows. Sometimes you might do a really crazy grade like this where you have really blue shadows and really kind of yellow warm highlights. We can make a new node and use this kind of thing to normalize the top and bottom of your image and it will look a little bit more classy if we do it this way. So here's before and here's after. It really kind of adds a little bit of richness to the image by making sure that the darker parts are actually kind of neutral and the brighter parts are neutral as well. Next we have saturation versus saturation. I'll just reset our grade here. Let's say we have everything really saturated. Everything's just crazy. We make a new node. We can select things just by how saturated they are. So I'll grab something that's really saturated and we can desaturate things as they get more saturated to kind of balance this out a little bit. This is again, something that can kind of get you in trouble. But if you're having trouble with like a really bright color, you know, like a, bright orange traffic cone or something. This will sometimes help to kind of just take down the really bright electric colors while keeping some of the other colors a little more saturated. There are other tools to do this like Color Boost, but this is a way you can get really detailed with exactly how you want that to change the saturation from the input saturation. We also have saturation versus luminance, which is similar. So things that are more saturated, we can turn down and have them be a little bit richer. That's sometimes a good option for those electric colors as well. So there you go, those are the basics of the hue, saturation, and luminance curves in the color page of DaVinci Resolve. Again, if you're getting into color, you're just kind of learning it, make sure to check out this training. Consider getting that because it's all of the cool knowledge that we could think to pack into a video course, okay? So check it out. And I will check out some candy later because it's delicious. You, this will help you make colors delicious, and then you can eat candy and have it double-licious. Isn't that a gum?